And when you look at that, uh, driving the more contextualized messages offers relevancy and doing it in real time, you know, how do you, how do you advise around that? Because there's a balance of technology and creating engagement, but also, as you mentioned, having that empathy, having that sentiment, having that, that human uh, you know, type feel to the, the offers and messages. You know, how do you best uh, advise clients to, to do that and, and drive memorable experiences? I think kind of managing the the, the technologies is well, um, is it kind of, uh, challenging? I think with the right technology, if you have it there, it should actually enable you to have some of these hygiene factors of being able to deliver like the contextualized kind of message offers. Um, and I think that it's quite important that you have the right technology that can actually kind of enable that because now that's very much kind of a hygiene factor, I guess, when it comes to delivering a really good customer experience. Because um, I think then the challenge of then creating a memorable customer experience is actually really then understanding your consumer and making sure that the, the like how you do actually delight or kind of surprise a consumer at that particular point in time to be able to kind of cut through and, and make sure that experience itself is not seen as me too or something I've experienced somewhere else. It's a huge area. If you try and get your head around all of that, it becomes too complex to, to comprehend. I always start with saying to people, you know, it's like anything. You, you, it's like sales. You've got to put yourself in the customer's shoes or the consumer's shoes. You've got to think about, if I was them, what's the conversation I'd want to have with, with the brand? What's the conversation the customer wants to have? Um, in terms of once you understand that, then you've got a chance of meeting their expectations. Because obviously a lot of things these days are automated. So you've got to think about how can we can I have enough data points to know, infer, guess, predict the conversation that the customer wants to have. You know, being very simplistic, that's about knowing when to sell and when to serve. And, you know, that's, I think that's the thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of customer journey mapping because it looks at the end-to-end -end process in terms of where there are points where a customer might have heightened expectations of something happening next. You know, we've talked about before, Mark, if I'm, if, if I'm a, a consumer of um, broadband technology, you know, I was about to come on an important call with Mark Johnson in the US to talk about loyalty. My broadband is down. Um, you know, I have an expectation of what's going to happen next. I'm going to phone the broadband company. They're going to answer the call quickly. They're going to recognize from my calling line identity who I am. They're going to recognize where my, my address and that in this part of the UK, there's a broadband outage. They're going to say, Marlon, we're aware of the situation. We know you're going to talk to Mark soon. We're going to fix it. You're an important customer, a very handsome man. So you're the priority right now. It's going to be resolved in five minutes flat. Uh, if it's not done in five minutes flat, we'll call you back in six. In fact, we'll call you back in six. It's either fixed or we'll apologize. And let me tell you, that apology is going to be incredible because we know you're going to renew with us this year and yada, yada, yada. That's what I would love to happen. It never does. So again, you've got to start thinking, if you were that consumer, what would you expect? And, and actually, how close can we get to meet an expectation? Because that's where loyalty is destroyed in not meeting customer expectations. That scenario again, I phone up, I'm on, I'm on in the IVR, in a queue for 30 minutes, but my call's important. I get through to somebody, hello, how can I help you? They have no idea who's calling. It's Marlon Bowser. Okay, how can I help you, Mr. Bowser? What do you mean? You, okay, my broadband is down. Why do you think I'm phoning you? Okay, Mr. Bowser, calm down. Let me look into that. Clatter, 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 clatter. And it goes on. And it's just, you get anxious, frustrated, annoyed, angry. At that point, those negative emotions destroy brand value. And the reverse is equally true. You know, positive emotions, you're know, feeling pleased, looked after, cared for, whatever, create financial value. That's the way you've got to start thinking about things. You know, and, and it's, I think, so customer journeys are great for doing that, but then you still got the yes, question of, okay, well, how do we know when somebody is upset? You know, how can we measure that? And, and the technology exists, Mark. You know, we've known this for years. You know, most, I'd, I'd be amazed if any call center right now is not <laughs> employing technology to, to listen in on those calls. You know, your speech recognition, speech technology to work out whether the customer is talking over the agent. That shows a sense of impatience, you know, frustration, you know, and, and actually what the tone of the voice is. Is it heightened? Is the person getting angry, screaming? 
all that kind of stuff, that sentiment, that sentiment data, that's gold dust. Then you just feed straight back into CRM. And then question, what are you gonna do with it? What's the context? What do we know about that caller? It's Mark Johnson, he's a rich and powerful man. He spends a lot of money with us. He's close to renewal. Or is his first experience? What does that mean? In that context of that event, what are we gonna do? And, and you need to think through that on a kind of human person to person basis. What would you expect on their shoes? And then actually how can you get the technology to automate that response? Which might just be raising a, a ticket in Zendesk saying, someone needs to phone Mark, he's not happy, it's the third time this week, let's phone him up. And actually changing your standard behavior, you know, why wait to the next email newsletter and hope he still wants to buy from you? So, I mean, we've been talking about personalization and uh, a one-to-one -one interaction for quite some time now. And now I feel it's, again, it's it, they expect it. You, you can't really uh, make any excuses anymore, right? So I feel for brands, my advice is reciprocity is really important, right? So that's where the reward programs comes in. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer that it's not just having a rewards program, it's your overall, you know, loyalty strategy, which will help you, you know, build that connection and create those experiences. But the, re the reciprocity from rewards uh, and, you know, giving them um, something for an action which have they, they've taken, and it need not be a purchase, it could be a very non-transactional connection, I think it creates a really memorable experience. Like, think about all the times you, um, you know, uh, score your free latte at your favorite, you know, coffee shop, like it's a nice feeling, right? So you remember that and uh, that's the memorable experience. Another thing, you know, which I've seen some brands do um, is giving kudos or showing the customer that they appreciate them uh, for, you know, small actions they've taken. Like, oh, wow, you get like 50 points for writing a review. You know, thank you for that. You're a superstar or whatever that is, that language, that communication. I feel again, you know, uh, building that connection with them one on one and going beyond a more transactional relationship. You know, that's, I feel, is really key for creating those experiences. So uh, hopefully I won't, I won't beat this drum too much, but we'll start with the data. <laughs> Technology is only as good as the data, right? So we'll start there. Um, so it's, it's collecting that first party data. Um, and loyalty is one of the few brand and customer relationships where you're so well positioned to collect that data. Customers are willing to provide it and they want you to use it in service of their experience. Uh, so I think a lot about Stitch Fix and they do a great job with their interactive tools uh, to thumbs up and thumbs down different aspects of an outfit. And it's really fun and exciting and it generates a, an enormous amount of data on the back end to help them deliver better recommendations, which in turn, you know, helps them drive more revenue. Um, another interesting thing to think about with technology is elevating customer service. Um, so we all know in this world of social media, negative experiences can get out there really quickly and get unruly. Um, so shutting them down and making sure they're addressed quickly is important. But rather than just scaling your call centers, uh, using uh, the technology uh, behind AI automation, chatbots, you can find faster resolutions across channels, and then you can still escalate to live agents where appropriate. Uh, Lemonade Insurance does a really great job with this. They actually have a few different chatbots. Maya specifically focuses on their onboarding, and then Gem focuses on their claims. You can imagine based on the state of, of what you're actually trying to achieve with Lemonade, you might have a little bit of a dis different disposition buying insurance versus filing a claim. Um, and then the last thing is real-time redemption. So again, this is one that's been around for a while where you've seen particularly, you know, every major national grocery store, for example, partners with gas stations for points. But how do you partner to have point of sale integration so you can redeem for points at that point of sale beyond those types of, of brick and mortar locations?